Welcome back everyone, my name is Clint Hoagland and this is Creating Electronic Music with Chuck. In video number 28, we talked about using MIDI with Chuck. We talked about how to control Chuck programs with a MIDI controller, and we also discussed how to control MIDI hardware from Chuck. More recently, I was wondering if it was possible to send MIDI clock from Chuck because I wanted to use it to send clock to a MIDI drum machine. I found that we can do that, so we're going to show how that works, but on the way there, we're going to take a little detour into hexadecimal numbers, how to read them, why they're so common to see when dealing with computers, and how we can use them to understand the structure of a MIDI message. So the way I figured this out was, as I sometimes do, I went into the examples that come with the Chuck distribution. The easiest way to get at these is to crack open the mini article and then go to File, Open Example. That will open a file chooser dialog that is pointed to the examples directory. In this particular case, I want to look at a file in the MIDI directory called midiout.ck. Now, in the comment at the top of this file, there's a hint that we can see after the code for a good explanation of how MIDI messages work. Let's scroll down and see what that says. I'm going to read this next part verbatim. MIDI messages, how they work. Thanks to Dave Marshall for this excellent and clear explanation. And here's a URL, and that URL actually does still work. MIDI messages are used by MIDI devices to communicate with each other. Structure of MIDI messages. MIDI message includes a status byte and up to two data bytes. Status byte. The most significant bit of status byte is set to one. The four low order bits identify which channel it belongs to. Four bits produce 16 possible channels. The three remaining bits identify the message. The most significant bit of data byte is set to zero. Now, if we scroll down a little bit from there, we can see some examples of some of the MIDI messages we saw in video 28, note off and note on. And we can see in those messages some stuff that seems kind of familiar from video 28 as well. Specifically, there were three data streams, which Chuck calls data one, data two, and data three. But here, data one is called the status byte. What Chuck calls data two and data three are here called data byte one and data byte two. And then the status byte is this thing that says 9x for the note on and 8x for the note off, which if you're not used to reading this kind of thing could look pretty arcane and arbitrary. It does make a lot of sense if you take a little time to tease apart what those numbers mean though, and that's what we're going to do now. These are called hex numbers, which is short for hexadecimal numbers. We'll see in a minute how and why it takes two hexadecimal numbers to represent one byte, spelled B-Y-T-E. Now what is a byte? A byte is the term for eight adjacent bits in your computer's memory, or in some other digital message. Recall when we were talking about computer's memory as a series of ones and zeros? A bit is a single position in your computer's memory, or in a message between computers, that can either be on or off. One is on, zero is off. A modern day hard drive will contain trillions of these bits, but each one of them is either a one or a zero. You can build up what we call binary numbers by setting these bits side by side. Let's see how it works by setting binary numbers alongside numbers in the more common base 10 numbering system. Recall that in our base 10 numbering system, we can count 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, but then if we want to keep counting, we have to jump over a position, put a 1 in that position, and start over. Binary is just like that, the only difference being that the numbers only go from 0 to 1, so once you run out of numbers at 1, you jump over a position and start over. Let's try it out. 0 is 0 for both binary and base 10. 1 is also 1 in both. When we get to 2, in binary we jump over a position. 1, 0 in binary is equivalent to 2 in base 10. If we change that last 0 to 1, we can add the 2 and the 1 together, equaling 3. Now we're out of 1s again, so we jump up another position, to 1, 0, 0, which is equivalent to 4. If we add our 1 on to the end of that, 1, 0, 1 is equivalent to 5. If we take that 1 back off and add the 1, 0 on, 1, 1, 0 is equivalent to 6. Add the 1 on the end back on, and we get 1, 1, 1, which is equivalent to 7. So we see here that we have three bits side by side. This is what we mean when we say that we have a three-bit number. One thing we can observe is that, using a three-bit number, we can count from 0 to 7 and no higher because we're out of bits. Let's add another bit and make it a four-bit number. 1, 0, 0, 0 is equivalent to 8 in base 10. At this point, we can make two interesting and useful observations. The first is that you can infer the number of possible values for a particular set of bits by raising the number 2 to the n power, where n is the number of bits. Let's check that out. 2 to the power of 1 is 2, and it has two possible values, 0 and 1. 2 to the power of 2 is 4, 0 through 3. 2 to the power of 3 is 8, which gave us 8 possible values, 0 through 7. 
We just added a fourth bit, so from that we can infer that, because 2 to the fourth power is 16, we have 16 possible values, 0 through 15. If we fill in the rest of this chart, we can see that this is correct. The second observation is that, for any sequence of binary numbers, you can double the value by shifting the sequence left by one position. If we have a number of 0011, that's equivalent to 3, and if we shift it left to 0110, it's a 6, and if we shift it left again, it's 1100, which is 12. Okay, so we've seen how a 4-bit number maps onto corresponding numbers in base 10. What were these letters about? If we want to look at a bunch of these binary numbers in sequence, it's much more convenient if each of them is always represented by a single character in print. So we use hexadecimal notation, which is base 16, rather than decimal notation, which is base 10. All that means is that the numbers 10 through 15 are represented by the letters A through F. 10 is A, 11 is B, 12 is C, 13 is D, 14 is E, and 15 is F. The letters th there are just replacements for those numbers so that they can be represented with one character. Now, as we said before, a byte is not 4 bits, a byte is 8 bits. That's 8 of these 1s or zeros back to back. 2 to the power of 8 is 256, so an 8-bit number has 256 possible values from 0 to 255. One way to think about an 8-bit number is just as two 4-bit numbers back to back. You can represent it as two sets of zeros and ones next to each other like so. 0 is 8 zeros, 255 is 8 ones, 254 is 7 ones with a 0 at the end. If we shift the binary representation of 254 to the right by one position, we divide it by 2, so now it is 127. Is that right? Let's check. We can convert these two binary numbers into their base 10 representations and add them together. The one on the right is 1111, which we know from before is 15. The 4-bit number on the left is 0111, which is equivalent to 7. But it's in the 16's place in this number, remember how the places work in binary numbers. So here we multiply this 7 by 16, which is 112, and then we add it to the 15 on the right, which is 127. So that checks out. So now we know that an 8-bit number is just two 4-bit numbers back to back, and we know that a 4-bit number can be represented by a hexadecimal character. That means that an 8-bit number can be represented by two hexadecimal numbers back to back. 00, 0 is two sets of four zeros, FF is two sets of four ones. 0F is four zeros, four ones. 1-1 one, one is three zeros and a one followed by three zeros and a one, etc., etc. If you're like me, you might have encountered hex numbers like this in the past. For example, RGB colors are usually represented in this way, with each of the red, green, and blue components represented by its own two hexadecimal representation. Looking at six hexadecimal characters back to back like this seems really complicated because, at least in my mind, I'm like, how am I supposed to convert this text string into three base 10 numbers between 0 and 255? It's kind of comforting to know that, from the computer's perspective, that six hexadecimal string just represents six sets of four zeros and ones. Which brings us back to MIDI messages. Armed with this knowledge, let's go back and read our guide Dave Marshall's explanation of a MIDI message again. Structure of MIDI messages. MIDI message includes a status byte and up to two data bytes. Status byte, the most significant bit of status byte is set to one. The four low order bits identify which channel it belongs to, four bits produce 16 possible channels, the three remaining bits identify the message. The most significant bit of data byte is set to zero. So now that we know what a byte is, we can tease apart what these statements mean. A MIDI message includes a status byte and up to two data bytes. A byte is two sets of four ones and zeros. So a MIDI message is going to be two, four, or six of those sets of bits. The first byte, the first two sets of four bits is going to be the status byte. The most significant bit is the one furthest to the left. For the status byte in a MIDI message, that is going to be one. The four lower order bits identify which channel it belongs to. This is referring to the second set of four bits. So these four bits are saying which of the 16 MIDI channels this message is supposed to go to. This is interesting because it tells us that the reason that note off and note on were 16 numbers apart in video 28 is that the 15 numbers in between them would have been what I needed to use if I was using a MIDI channel other than one. I would not have guessed that. Another thing that is interesting about it is that it tells us why a MIDI connection always has 16 channels. It's always represented by the second four bits in a MIDI message. The three remaining bits identify the message. Now this is where we look back at the definitions of the MIDI messages, and now it starts to make a bit more sense. A status byte of 8x is a note off. The note at the bottom reaffirms what we learned a little bit ago, which is that the second half of the status byte, the last four bits, are the channel number, and that's what the x represents. 
So what does an 8 look like for the first four bits? An 8 is 1, 0, 0, 0. We know that a status byte's most significant bit is always 1, so 1, 0, 0, 0, or 8, is the first possible value for the first half of the status byte. The next possible value is 1, 0, 0, 1, which is 9, and what do you know, that's a note on. So what's happening under the hood here is that the status byte for playing a note is 1001 followed by the channel number for a note on, and 1000 followed by a channel number for a note off. That actually seems like a very simple and reasonable way to send this information. So now, let's talk about the data bytes. These are the two optional bytes that come after the status byte. According to this chart, what they do depends on what the status byte is. If the status byte is a note on or a note off, then the first data byte is the note number, and the second data byte is the velocity. The way we know a byte is not a status byte is that it starts with 0 instead of 1. So all data bytes start with 0, and then the next 7 bits give you the value that is being set. 2 to the 7th power is 128, and that is why velocity goes from 0 to 127, and also why continuous controller values like mod wheel also go from 0 to 127. One thing we touched on a little in video 28 is that pitch bend is a little bit special in that you combine the two data bytes together to get a more granular value. Here we can see the way that that works. The first data byte is the most significant bits, and the second data byte is the least significant bits. That gives us 14 bits to play with, which gives pitch bend a resolution of 16,384 possible values. So let's jump back to what we did in video 28 and look at the moment at which we printed some MIDI messages to the console. The node on had three data streams, which we now know were a status byte and two data bytes. Let's imagine those three bytes as bits. The first byte was the status byte, and we know that my MIDI controller was sending on channel 1. That means the second four bits were 0, 0, 0, 0, which is the first MIDI channel, and the most significant bit was 1. According to this chart, a node on is 9x, so to make the first half of the byte a 9, we change the first four bits from 1, 0, 0, 0 to 1, 0, 0, 1. That means that the first byte was 1001000. We convert that to decimal since there's nothing in the last four bits, we just need to multiply the first half by 16. 9 times 16 is 144, and that was, in fact, our status byte in decimal form. The note off is just the same thing again, but the status byte is 1000000 instead of 1001000. Because that 1 was in the 16's place, in decimal form, it makes the number go down by 16, i.e. to 128. If it, in decimal form, were 145 and 129, that would be 1001001 and 1000001, and we now understand that what that would have been is a note on followed by a note off on channel 2 instead of channel 1. So that's why, when you're using a MIDI output in Chuck, you select the device port, but you don't need to select a channel. The channel info is in the MIDI message itself as the last four bits. Okay, now that we know that, let's go back to the reason I started researching this in the first place. I wanted to send MIDI clock. If we go down to the bottom of the MIDI explanation in this Chuck example, we can see the following. System messages carry information that is not channel specific, such as timing signal for synchronization, positioning information in pre-recorded MIDI sequences, and detailed setup information for the destination device. And then it says timing clock is F8, start sequence is FA, and stop sequence is FC. If we view those as binary sequences, they are 11111000, 11111100, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000, 11111000
and then I'm going to define a, oh, and it's attached to a Dan Electro Honeytone speaker so that the, the actual sound will be picked up on my microphone. Next, we define three different MIDI messages. We define the start, which is, a, as we saw before, that's a 250 in data one, which is our status byte. 252 is a status byte for our MIDI stop. 250, 248 is a status byte for a MIDI clock pulse, as we saw earlier. Then I've got a function called set tempo, which will set the values for the beat, the bar, and the tick. Note that the beat divided by 24 is a tick. That is part of the MIDI clock standard. It has uh, 24 cl clock ticks per second, and that is part of the MIDI standard. I just looked that up on the internet. Now we have a, a function called pulse MIDI clock, and what it does is it, uh, every tick, it sends that uh, MIDI clock pulse to the drum machine. Now, at the beginning of my real part of the script, I set my tempo to 80, and then I spork the pulse MIDI clock so it will continue to go. And then I send the MIDI start to the drum machine send, and then I'm going to do that for a bar, and then I'm going to change the tempo to 120, that, go for another bar, then I'm going to change the tempo again to 160, go for another bar, change the tempo to 60, go for another bar, then do one more 16th note, which is a quarter of a beat, and then send the MIDI stop message to the drum machine, and then do one more beat, just so it sounds a little better. And hopefully this all makes sense. Let's see if it works. In this video, we discuss the internals of MIDI messages, how binary numbers can be represented as hex numbers and as decimal numbers, and then we use that information to send MIDI clock to a MIDI drum machine. In the next video, we're going to talk about chug-ins.